We are talking studs and duds on today's episode, walking you through all the great performances and all the ones that made you cry, which ones are prescriptive and which ones should you ignore. Make sure you leave a comment about how your week went and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Monday episode of the show. Jason Moore, Andy Holloway with you. What it do? <laughs> also have Deucer's Alley all filled up, packed out. The judge is here. Hey, Al Borland back from his uh, did, did, what was it? More of a jaunt through the Mexican Riviera. You got it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the rap scallion here as well. Are you awake over there, Justin? Are you alive? I'm awake. Okay, barely, barely. It was a rough week for fantasy, but I'm I'm here. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's a lot of what this Monday is. If you're celebrating, congratulations. Mm-hmm. You have uh, yeah, some Deontay of you. Foreman. <laughs> <laughs> you have Deontay Foreman. If you're not, we are here to commiserate with you. And um, uh, quick headline here because I know if I don't mention it at the very top, it's all that Twitter will have um, directed at us. Mike's puppy is doing well. Mm, yes, Mike uh, will be back with us tomorrow. Recovered and uh, doing doing very well. Doing well. So um, you know, shouldn't have eaten that sock or whatever it was. I believe it was a uh, uh, sock or a blanket and some plastic. They haven't found uh, the source yet. Really? I hope they do find and remove said source. Yeah, I think the puppy is doing well, which is very, um, we're happy to report and um, we're with you. We're reacting to the weekend. We've got news to talk about, your studs, your duds, and of course, a uh, very sophisticated mm. Monday mm. pun day. Yes. Let's begin with the good, Jason. Uh, like, well, not good for you, but good for everyone else. Deonta score, man. Yeah, he did against me a lot. But how about La Marvelous Jackson? Boy, he was good. He, he was, was real super good. good. I think uh, Al played him against him in a couple of leagues. Uh, what about Jamiracle Gibbs? There he is. Oh, oh, Bilbo bagged him. <laughs> yeah, he did. He played really well. He sure did. Uh, Kareem the Dream. This oh, week. But they weren't all good. No. Like Jared Goffel. Oh, or <laughs> I didn't see this one. Or uh, uh, very sophisticated Justin Herbutt. <laughs> yeah. And what does that do? Amari Pooper. Yes. And, uh, well, someone was sick this weekend, and so let's give him some Bijan Robitussin. Yeah, that sucked. Uh, how about Pooper Cup? Or Austin Ickler. And Raheem Ghostert. And, uh, well, there's a lot here. Deshaun What's the thing that's wrong with what him? What is wrong with you? What is wrong? Does John Watts sucks? <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, I saw a lot of Deshaun Watson related uh, negative puns that I really enjoyed reading. They just weren't. We could not put here. No, uh, I did update my uh, top three. My players I've enjoyed watching play football the least this season. Okay. Those rankings are updated. Moving to the number one spot is Derek Carr up from number two. Oh. So he's the number one un most unwatchable. Uh, number two is now Deshaun Watson. Okay. Deshaun Watson. It's limited viewability. Yeah, I was going to say good news. You might not have to watch him. He uh, loves being cleared to play football and not playing. And then number three, Mac Jones. Yes, you got the win, but I still don't like – I didn't like watching See, I felt like he looked watchable this week. He was more watchable, his play, but all of his reactions and celebrations – Oh, sure. It made him very okay. unlikable. But uh, every week you can submit your Monday pun day over on X at the FF Ballers or on Instagram at Fantasy Footballers and help us react to the weekend. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, I mean, this isn't uh, NFL news, but I just realized that a week from tomorrow will be the spookiest episode of the season, Jason. Oh. 
So uh, you'll have to tune in. We've got the uh, Halloween episode of the show. I changed my costume mm-hmm. this morning. I like where you're going. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you'll like it in person. I, I And I'll tell you this about my costume. I, I thought about it. I thought it was a good idea. It was timely. It was, it was fitting for the show. It's uh, very funny. And then I definitely second-guessed it and was <laughs> like, should I do this? I will say this. You will never second guess it more than once you're completely ready okay yeah yeah and uh we don't record this show no 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 no, don't worry no one will see it (laughs) good good and uh well mike will be uh mike will be dressed up as well not as a bear but uh as something else so uh well this news kyron williams this came before kickoff but he's been placed on ir yeah you kind of saw this coming when they started talking about you know week 10 you're like well they might need that roster spot especially after they go and add a bunch of running backs um so yeah uh kyron get healthy this i mean that's a huge blow the teams that had kyron williams were relying on him and doing an rb1 unexpectedly well yeah yeah and uh, I I traded him on the news of three weeks. Yeah, wisely. And then got uh, got this news, so got out of that. Atlanta Falcons running back Bijan Robinson was quote not feeling all that great. One said of, Arthur Smith. Yeah, one of the biggest storylines of the weekend. Um, I, I've got plenty of Bijan Robinson shares. There's no one on planet Earth who has Bijan Robinson who did not start Bijan Robinson because it was halftime of the game before the reporting started coming out there of were what no, is going on. No reports. And let me tell you, it is tremendous news that he was feeling sick. Oh, yeah. It is the best news you've ever had because if he wasn't, one, security detail for Arthur Smith required immediately. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, Cordero Patterson was getting piles of work, Algier, no snaps for Bijan. And, and- they won the ball game. Again, I was so upset that they won just because I don't like what Arthur Smith because, is because yeah, willing to do. Arthur's now ha- he has a card he can pull out when you question him. And the card shows that when you don't use Bijan very much Kyle Pitts or very much Drake London, you he's like I see I won anyways. Mhm. And I don't want him to have that card. No, it's it's too dangerous. Card. So uh, I, I watched the interview with Bijan um, afterwards talking through this. He, please tell me he didn't say I felt fine. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, no. It, was, it was very comforting. Um, it was a little strange because it seemed like he, you know, he wasn't feeling well. Um, he said he, he, didn't, he didn't take a COVID test. He wasn't sure. His head was hurting. He felt worse the night before than the day of. Um, and, but he said he talked to Coach Smith, and the, Coach Smith said, we want to make sure you're good to go next week. We've got two other capable guys. You know, we'll 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 rest you. And so, hearing that they want to have him ready for next week is everything you want to hear in a B. John Robinson manager. Um, it it is weird. You know, it's like Arthur seems like the type of guy that's like, "Oh, you got a headache? Get in there." Um, and yet, well, he, he look, didn't. there is. I don't think there's a world where, like, Cordero Patterson gets zero touches. Maybe it's two. Maybe it's three. But it'll be annoying. And Tyler Algier will get his touches. And so you are going to be – like, Bijan is amazing. Bijan is not a player I'm saying you trade away or, 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 or fear. But I said it earlier when we were drafting. We were doing our redraft. Like, I, I didn't take Bijan as high as maybe other people would because this team is not in – the red zone a lot. They control the pace of the game. Their defense is playing pretty well. They like to burn the clock. Like they won 16, 13. Mm-hmm. I like a running back on a team that's going to score 30. So that it just takes some ceiling away. Like Bijan will probably have, I would guess two big ceiling games rest of year. Yeah. And but, then a bunch of consistency. I do think he will be very consistent, very reliable, a great fantasy asset. One that you could kick the tires on a cheap acquisition. Just, you know, offer something kind of crappy because... Brees Hall or Bijan? Uh, um, Rest of season rankings. Jason Moore's... I'm only asking for two rankings. Bijan's and Brees's in in order. I would take... Oh, man. I think I go... 
Brees <laughs> and then Bijan. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I lean Bijan by a by a. It's very very a smidge. Close. Uh, Deshaun Watson left early. They think it's due to the shoulder injury. He left due to a concussion check. Didn't get cleared to return the two. No, he did get cleared. Sorry, he did get cleared to return. He was doing doing rotator cuff exercises on the sideline. The two balls that he threw for interceptions were, I mean, indications of a shoulder injury. I would say because they both just died. They weren't. They didn't even get halfway there. Yeah the 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 play that he got the concussion on, or or I guess did not get a concussion, but was. You know, it looked like it, um, and he got evaluated. I guess for that it. interception got called back, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, but it was it should have been. But my goodness, my goodness, that all the all the the worry and you know injury and and all that that was after the play was done. Like that wasn't what caused this egregious pass. It, he rolls out, he buys time, and he throws this ball that is the same exact pass that I would do. Oh, 100%. I mean, it was slow, not on target, um, and should have, I mean, been the easiest interception of all time. The, somehow uh, the he let the ball hit the ground. But Deshaun Watson doesn't look right. And they were playing very poorly. They were getting stomped. And then the backup comes in, and they're moving the ball. And uh, that game was they wild. Won. They that won game, again. Miles Garrett. Oh. Mercy. They gave up 456 yards on defense in 38 points to Gardner Minshew and they won the ball game with a backup quarterback and Miles Garrett and turnovers and fumbles and I've it never, was a really entertaining game I've never seen a more dominant bad defensive performance it was yeah I mean the every, fantasy wise they scored 17 fantasy points and gave up almost 500 yards yeah every play was either horrific or incredible defensively Speaking of the Browns, Jerome Ford, high ankle sprain after Jason. You had him as a start of the week. He had a huge touchdown run, so he delivered. And now he's in a protective boot, and it doesn't seem like Jerome Ford's going to be on the field. Yeah. Which means Kareem the Dream is going to have his chance. Seems most likely. Uh, Luke Musgrave exited with an ankle injury. Now, he wasn't the guy you put into your lineup instead of Pat Fryermuth, who was oh. injured, right? No, he was. Oh, okay. He sure was. He was the guy that I picked uh, over Pat Fryermuth as the start of the week and uh, had five targets and four receptions, but got the ankle injury, and that stunk. Well, uh, Austin Eckler did turn his left ankle and not perform yet again. Yeah, also in my lineup. Jalen Hurts left. Uh, his left knee looked a little banged up. He played the second half with a brace. Uh, monitor it this week. Gerald Everett quad injury. Jalen Waddle did. I mean, Jalen Waddle at this point. He he. You know they have the medical tent. Uh -huh. There should be a separate one, and it should be Jalen's place. Yeah, and he should go hang out own, there. He's got a nameplate at least on the blue tent. Have the Jalen Waddle's tent, and yeah. maybe he allows other people to get checked out there too. I doubt there'd be room occupancy. You'd be in a waiting list. Yeah. I mean, the back injury. Uh, you know, he's on a heating pack in between drives. He is limping off the field constantly. This is a two-year thing. Oh, it, it, his entire NFL career is if he's healthy, he's injured. And 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 kud you could say kudos to him. He plays through a lot of these injuries. You think one of his legs or, is longer than the other? Maybe it's just <laughs> got to be something wrong. I, I can't remember. I mean, it used to be like uh, LaShawn McCoy would, would always go off the field Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Paul Pierce? Yeah, it just like, oh, he looks like he rolled his ankle, he'd limp off. Julio did that, too. come back in the next play and be absolutely fine. But Jalen Waddle having him, like, as a fantasy manager, he's he's on my uh, my dynasty, my main dynasty roster, and it's like every single game is the exact same thing. I go, well, I lost Waddle. Yeah, Wait, yeah. he's playing again? If he's healthy, he's injured. Yes. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's uh, going to play tonight, barring a pregame set, uh, setback. And an update, uh, if people want to know where Mike and I's matchup is, uh, Mike did have Deonta Foreman. I mm. did not have Deonta Foreman. Um, Mike chose to uh, wait on Christian McCaffrey, which was a wise decision that I tried to dissuade. Yep, I sure did. Did uh, you really try? Uh, did you try to like? <laughs> yes, a little bit. Like, uh, did he have a backup plan of any kind? His, you want to know what his backup plan was? I asked him, Kyle Usechek. He was willing to wow. wait on Juice to get Christian McCaffrey. Wow. Um. So, but I still have a chance to win. Jordan Addison and Christian McCaffrey just can't 
combined for five points. Okay. That's it. So you'll be watching real. I'll be watching for, for about 23 four. seconds. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. If you took a chance and played the much improved, constantly delivering for fantasy Detroit Lions defense, whoops, Lamar Jackson carved them up like a Christmas ham. Their offense looked like, I think it was, it was last week where we were talking about, um, I, th I think it was on the Wednesday episode where we were asking what offenses do we think could turn it around yeah. and be better. I yeah. mentioned the Baltimore Ravens. It looked like – because they have looked terrible. They could not have looked better. Every Everything they did worked. Every play worked. Every offensive like, oh, let's go deep to Zay Flowers. That play worked. Let's go – Let's hit uh, Beckham. Let's let, hit Bateman. Let's yeah. hit Andrews. Let's go uh, with a screen game. Let's let's have Lamar run. Let's Every single thing they did was like – was like they knew what the Lions' defensive play call was, and they called exactly what they needed to. It was it was twenty one for twenty seven, three fifty seven and three, a rushing touchdown. And had the Lions done anything offensively, Lamar might have thrown for five or six. I mean, it was a perfect passer rating. He was a monster. This will sound Dude. so stupid, but you know what the key to the NFL is in being a good quarterback. Hmm. Time in the pocket. Okay. I just, this weekend, it was just like, if you have a couple seconds, you decimate. The league is set up to where if you can protect the quarterback at all, they will carve you up. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, offensive, defensive lines, that's, that's you look at the best teams in the league, and you're, they're all going to have something in common with their offensive and defensive lines. They're good. I had the privilege of facing Patrick Mahomes in both of our main leagues. Uh, 32 for 42, 424 and 4. Yeah. So I'm on the losing end of both of those matchups. This was the type of matchup you really wanted for Mahomes because, you know, you, you thought the, the Chargers could keep up. It was divisional. Now they've got Denver. Great, bad defense that, uh, you know, I think his – is going to be really, really safe, maybe not the ceiling, and then Miami. So it's it's going to be juicy here for Mahomes. Uh, there were three quarterbacks in the made mistakes but crushed for your fantasy team list. Gardner Minshew had four total touchdowns, 305, two on the ground, two through the air. Josh Allen, he did <laughs> he did. This is, this is what I was getting at with the comment earlier, was watching the Buffalo game mm -hmm. in contrast to the time that Lamar had. And – Josh Allen has to make the world's greatest play on every play to succeed. He tried very hard to do that, but the pass protection for Josh Allen this year has not been there. Two touchdowns, one rushing, and then Jalen Hurts, two touchdowns, one rushing. Uh, where are you on the tush push, uh, uh, you know? I, controversy i are you pro push i am pro push i know I, you I, now, how much of that is just you want it there for hurts who's like your quarterback in there's at least 10 percent of me that the whole reason i like it is because of what it allows jalen hurts to do as a fantasy they have to gain eight and a half yards per first down for what it's worth that's yeah. legitimately like the eagles play in a league where they have to gain eight and a half yeah but so can everyone else they just choose not to i love the well, rule. No, they i like i like when people find superpowers I like Superman. He's the best. Like this play is awesome. Yeah, it's not. It's not stoppable currently. But there's. I mean, I. I really do believe that people can figure it out. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if they'll have to. I don't think it's no, staying they're, around. They're, no, they're getting rid of it for sure. This off season, the NFL will say that you can't push offensive players or something it's wild like that Deonta Foreman at running back uh I didn't want to get into it earlier because I knew he was going to be here in the stud 16 for 89 scored three total touchdowns he played fewer snaps than Darrington Evans he had did you a, know that I did not know that yeah. um obviously he had the carries so when he was on the field he was getting the ball um but he had a couple of plays that were just just man plays I mean you yeah, know, he looked great. He jumped, jumped three, over. Four yeah. tackles, hurdle a guy. Uh, you know, he he looked like the Deonta Foreman I've I've always really loved. The 
negative, and you were on him, which is so ironic because you got destroyed yeah, by him. But you, from the beginning of the week, you didn't. Uh, you were questioning our view of the snaps and situation there in Chicago because we had watched the week before, and it was pretty much the same kind of breakdown. What happened differently this week was the Chicago Bears dominated the Raiders. Yeah, uh, D Bilbo, uh, you know, was dominant, and the Raiders were awful. And so this was perfect for Deonta Foreman. Uh, there you go. I, I guess we'll take a quick break and come back and talk about uh, the greatest wide receiver at the running back <laughs> position you've ever seen. All right, Alvin Kamara, 14 targets, 12 more catches. We talked about it reacting to the Thursday night game, but he is a must-start right now. Yeah, he's uh, perfect for fantasy and terrible for the Saints. Well, hopefully uh, you finally got what you wanted from Jameer Gibbs. He had a rushing touchdown. He was 11 for 68 on the ground. He had 10 targets. He had 58 receiving yards. He played 87% of snaps. It was a bad game for the Lions. It was a good game if you had Gibbs or Amon Ra. Yeah, I mean, this is everything you dream of. Him getting that kind of market share, still being involved like the last time in week three that we saw him in this role, they didn't really pass the ball to him. They used him on the ground, 17 carries, but this this game they actually used him multifaceted, used his skill sets as a receiver. It's great for fantasy. Um, Las Vegas next week. Yeah, I, th I think you, you're gonna you're gonna stay in the flames here. The expectation has been from me that David Montgomery uh, will miss this next week against the Raiders. Then they've got their bye week, and we'll be back for the Chargers. This. Uh this performance is sitting at number three on the week for running backs. Uh, hopefully, this is the beginning for Jameer Gibbs. Uh, he's averaging five a carry this year. It's not going to stay like this. Like when David Montgomery comes back, they want David Montgomery to be the primary ball carrier. I what's, think that's what's been nice is is this was not dependent on twenty carries, right? At, at least, I mean, it, you're right. Yeah, Montgomery is is great. But this was 11 carries. This was a bad a bad game for them, and yet he still produced. So Vegas, the bye week, and then the Chargers, the Bears, the Packers. Uh, we'll see what happens with Gibbs, but it was nice to see a sign of life. Uh, Gus Edwards. He, he had a monstrous 80-yard reception. Yep. That I mean, they just got him wide open. It is very, very, very hard in the NFL to have an 80-yard reception that you don't get a touchdown on. He did it. It's almost impossible, but he found a way. Yep. Um, that that was enough. He did get a rushing touchdown, 14 carries, and, and looked good against maybe the best run defense in the NFL. I mean, there was nothing that the Baltimore Ravens did that didn't work. The, the ground game worked. The receiving game worked. Tell me... Do you think that was a one-off, or do you think that the Ravens are going to click with the new coordinator and the talent they have? I think you're going to see some more of this. I do. I, I mean, it was as perfect as it could go, but I, I do. I think this was a um, a big moment for the team. And you have everybody healthy. Like, we, we do have everybody healthy at the moment in the in the receiver room. Uh, the Jonathan Taylor... Jonathan Taylor had 18 carries for 75 yards and a touchdown. Do you know who else had 18 carries? Tell me. Zach Moss. Mm. He also had 18 carries for 57 yards, no touchdown. What about the snap breakdown? Uh, 51. Wait, that can't. Yeah, that can't oh, right. yeah, 51 and 51. So they both played the same amount of snaps, got the same amount of carries, a 50-50 timeshare. Is that going to continue rest of season, or will the transition be made to Jonathan Taylor to be the dude? Um. Boy, this game, when you were watching it, it felt like it had two extra quarters in it. It just went on forever. I mean, the fact you had almost, what, 36 carries on the ground between the two? I don't think it continues at a 50-50 split, but it's not going to be much different. 55-45, it'll be close. Zach Moss will steal a touchdown sometimes, and mm -hmm. you'll be like, I mean, it was a good game for Jonathan Taylor. He's in the studs. But can you can you keep starting Zach Moss? I think you can keep flexing Zach Moss. If the matchup is... What? This was a bad matchup, right? Yeah, this was a terrible It's really matchup. bad next week against New Orleans. But it hasn't hurt you <laughs> to keep rolling him out there. Yeah. He had uh, one catch. That was the piece from the week before that was better. Uh, yeah, yeah. Saquon, B. 
big day. Uh, 21 for 77 scored. They won. Uh, Jerome Ford, we talked about it. James Cook, 13 for 56 on the ground, 3 for 46 and a touchdown through the air. He had 73% of the snaps. Now, Murray had 45%, so they were both out there together sometimes. Uh, Cook lining up. Like, did you see the post-game conference, though, from the uh, from Josh Allen? No. Wasn't wasn't a good mood. Really? The, he didn't like losing to the Patriots? No, didn't like it. Interesting. Uh, but, I, you know, he was so unhappy, and he, he came out and just said, like, if we knew what was wrong, we'd fix it. And it's pretty, pretty bleak right now, Oof. is what he said. But that the you know they're going to work to figure it out. But it it's true. Like here's a game where James Cook was very effective. Mm -hmm. Dalton, Dalton Kincaid. Kincaid was very involved. Got involved. Uh, was used downfield. Had a lot of yards. Gabe Dig Davis lost directions to the stadium. Right. He 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 ended up somewhere Walmart or I don't remember where he. I think ended it was up. Target. Target. Um, uh, Stephon Diggs is Diggs. I mean he scored. Diggs had a great game. And then they got beat. By the one and whatever Patriots at that point. Yeah. Uh, and you saw the news that Belichick has – he secretly yes. signed a long-term extension? Yeah, I guess that answers that. He gets to play, He gets to coach there as long uh, – I, he could never win a game again. He's earned the right to coach there until he says, I'm I'm, I'm not going to coach. Jerome Ford had the big play. Kareem Hunt had uh, two rushing touchdowns and looks to be the guy right now. Although, tomorrow's show, waivers. Yep. It, Get your Pierre Strong waiver claims ready because you saw a lot of Pierre Strong in that game late. Yeah, it's not going to be 100% Kareem Hunt for sure. And this Cleveland rushing offense is one we wanted to target heavily at the beginning of the season, obviously the, primarily because of Chubb, but they also have a really good defense and they want to run the ball. Um, if you know, if I had Deshaun Watson, I'd want to run the ball. And then uh, yeah, I think you missed Travis Etienne for the third week in a row has two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, and that I was just the Thursday you, game. I could just tell you, I I really really like getting two rushing touchdowns from my players every week. Every week, it's been nice. And then Sunday live, we talked about the Zach Evans situation because Daryl Henderson shows up here on the studs list, eighteen for sixty one and one off the couch. Yeah, he's he's going to be the dude for the next few weeks. That was the pickup to make. We brought it up after the waiver show. Um, obviously, when when we recorded the waiver show, uh, he was not yet on the roster. Yeah, harder to recommend. Right. Um, Although I believe, I'm going to credit Brooks. He came wandering into our office, as he often does, um, just whistling and you know enjoying his work day. And he said, what if they add Daryl Henderson? Yeah. And then they did. Little known fact, we actually have to tell Brooks when we, rec we sit down to record, stop whistling. He's yeah. usually always whistling. Constantly whistling. But it's bad for the audio product. It's when you're wealthy. Yeah, you what whistle, else are you going to do? You whistle while you walk. Uh, Daryl Henderson, though, looks like, you know, Zach Evans, I think, had one snap or zero. Zach Evans was demarcado. It's crazy because you have to imagine Zach Evans like, like we were on it early and, we, you know, I told people on Sunday Live, don't play. Like Henderson's likely to lead the, the group, but you could probably play Royce Freeman, who got work. Freeman got 43% of snaps. 12 carries, 66 yards but How does himself. that feel? To be Zach Evans to be and just Zach be completely Evans. supplanted. It's not like he failed in active work. It means that he... Yeah, zero snaps. It yeah. means that he was not ready for the role. It also means, I know he's a rookie, but it means he he will never be ready for the role. How can you be so much more ready at home in Daryl Henderson? Yeah, I mean, there's there's just... There's no trust there. There's nothing they've seen that they like. If the, if there's guys that they want off the street ahead of you when they are in desperate need of you who they drafted, Zach Evans, to step up, you will never have relevance. All right, A.J. Brown, a fifth consecutive 125-plus yard receiving game, 15 targets, 10 for 137. He's pretty much manhandling the league right now. He had 50% of the targets. So he's got that like black visor, and yes. after one of his big plays, he stood up and he, you know flexed and screamed towards the camera. It was a perfect camera shot. And I this first, did you get afraid? First time in my life, I was terrified yeah. at a television. Like I was a, I he scared me. I was like, that is a scary dude. He was, he is, so, he just looks like I I couldn't fathom trying to tackle him. No, he's uh he's a beast. He's a monster. 
Um, and getting it done. He is he's the uh, wide receiver one on the week right now. Um, he was the wide receiver one three weeks ago, top 10 last week. Um, in fact, four of his last five games, he has been a top 12 wide receiver, and the only one he hasn't is the wide receiver 13. In the past five weeks, you have not had um, a performance inside the top 24 by Devonta Smith. You saw Goddard start to play better. He's being more involved. And Devontae Smith has f five sub parish weeks. Mm -hmm. I guess we can talk about it later in the duds, but I, the initial reaction to that passing game. Uh, the, the passing game looks strong. I don't, they added Julio. I, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, the passing game looks strong. It's a matter of, for fantasy purposes, is it going to be such a clear 1A and then three for everyone else. Like <laughs> that's what it feels like right now. Yeah. My guess and is he was chirping too. You yeah. know, like he started talking and then he's like, if you just throw me the ball, it'll go well. And it has. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think it will stay this wide of a gap because I mean AJ Brown just set, you know, he tied uh uh an NFL all time record of games with hundred and twenty five or more receiving yards. That's all time. What he just did is historical. It's not just normal. That's not just going to keep happening every week. He's not going to do it 10 weeks in a row. If you include the whole season, which Devontae Smith started the year very hot, even looking at including those, the first seven weeks he's on pace for 77 for 930 and 5. Yeah, you'd be disappointed in that, but that's not crushing you. It's not a bust. Josh Downs, big game, scored a touchdown. Uh, tried to help your team, Jason. You just didn't, you know, the rest of the guys didn't get involved. Yeah, yeah, I, I was able to start him uh, in my lineup, and I was very happy early when he went for a touch. And I figure if I'm getting my second flex with a bomb touchdown, I'm going to beat Mike. I was wrong. You, Yeah, we you, you picked up Josh Downs, and I picked up the other Josh, Josh Palmer. Palmer was 5 for 133, 26% target share, and seems like he's going to be a staple in lineups the rest of the season. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's very necessary to this offense, huge – uh, Cuge was not goosed this week, which was nice to see him. Couple uh, catches, yeah, getting uh, getting involved, but he's not he's not ready to be the dude. So Palmer will stay. And the last two weeks, uh, and and make sure we have the drop ready for this here, uh, Al. But the last two weeks, it has looked like Michael Pittman was going to hurt your team. Yep, and then he suddenly didn't. And uh, two for eighty three and a touchdown for Pity City. We built this city. We're all in, man. I mean, I mean. Anthony Richardson is unbelievably great for fantasy, but he's not as good for these wide receivers as Gardner Minshew. Tyreek Hill is unguardable, 11 for 88 and a touchdown against the Eagles. Who knew that they were going to throw to him every play, especially when Waddle was off the field? Didn't matter. Huge game for Puka Nakua. Jason, you called it 8 for 154, 44% of the targets. There's a reason Pooper Cup was in the uh, top of the show is because Puka – took over yeah i mean he this is was great to see if you held on to him and didn't bail out yeah uh only two players in nfl history with 700 receiving yards in their first seven career games this is per espn 754 and 752 receiving yards for puka nakua and jamar chase i mean puka has been as elite as you could possibly be and he is for real, and he is to, here to stay. Yeah, and um, yet we can't get a boom game from Stafford, even if we begged for it. Yeah, I mean, they got kind of jobbed towards the end of that game with some refing, but uh, yeah, he, he could have done better earlier. Let me blitz a few of these uh, other wideouts you can comment on, guys, that you want to. Amon Ra ended up in Garbage Town, 19 <laughs> targets for... Oh, uh, garbage man can. You know, he doesn't always have to produce in garbage time, but, man, 13 for 102 in just some yucky garbage time. Mike Evans continues a good season, 6 for 82 and a touchdown. Yeah, he looks he looks outstanding. I, I, I can't imagine going away from him even if he has a down game here or there. Cortland Sutton scored again. He just keeps scoring. Yeah, Christian Kirk on Thursday night. Josh Palmer we talked about. Diggs got into the end zone late. Let's talk about Rashi Rice because – you know, you saw more of what you wanted to see. Five for 60, got into the end zone, played the most snaps. Mm -hmm. The snaps are what I always wanted to see. And uh, really, the only 
the only real player that had like a significant amount of time out on the field more than him was MBS. But I think we're seeing that transition, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. Rashi Rice keeps producing. Let's go. I'm I, excited. Who has him in our league? Uh, you sh- you are a you are a dirty I will man. give him back to you for a second round pick. I made you the offer last week. I'm going to continue it. I will. I will. I mean, what a keeper he'd be for I you. I will knife you in your sleep. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's not good. Uh, three for 84 and a touchdown for MBS, who finally got on the board. And uh, I was happy about this one. JSN. Oh, that was a good oh, call. Baby. Especially once uh, once we saw that uh, DK Metcalf was not active in that game. Oh, it was um, great. You 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 called it as your kind of sleeper pick of the week and had him in your DraftKings lineup, um, which you did not win. I won. I know. I don't know if you guys like. I thought I ran away with it, and by ran away, we both had like we oh, had, it was, we it had was a bad week, real, like real bad. And Mike week. Mike isn't here because he is uh, processing the fact he's going to get shamed this week. Yeah. But I thought I had it won when Pacheco scored. Like you guys both had Ken Walker. I was like, I'm dead. Like, I watched Ken Walker for the first five minutes of Cardinals game. I'm like, I'm a dead man. And then Jason scored. I'm like, I'm alive. And then Pacheco scored. I'm like, I'm a winner. And then Josh Palmer brought you back, and you beat me by like a point? Yeah, I beat you by a point. I feel like this is – to me, this is four wins in a row because I was out of town last week. That didn't count. That is how Jason That's, Moore would think yes, about that. Exactly. 92.54 to 91.86. Gross. You're the winner. Yeah. Congratulations. Someone yeah, has that, to be. Yeah, that was a low week. Not good. Uh, tight ends. Travis Kelsey. Oh, gosh. He was powered Anybody by the Anybody doubting whether he's he's worth a uh, first-round draft pick this year? He is. He is outstanding. I mean, you still have Mark Andrews who – Two touchdowns. I think right now he's he's had an absolutely incredible season, um, and he didn't cost you the same in the draft. So I, I think both have been great draft picks. Darren Waller. I mean, this was this was tight end. It was so it day was, national tight end day, and Kelsey Andrews, Waller, Goddard, Taysom Hill, Dalton and a Kincaid. good game from uh, Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, uh, I mean, everyone came through. They knew it was National Tight Ends Day, and every broadcast talked about it too much. But uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They hammered that home. Well, to be fair, the tight ends kept doing stuff. So it's, it's like, yeah, that's true. How are you not going to say it's National Tight End Day when a tight end catches a touchdown? But they uh, they all did. Uh, Dalton Kincaid didn't, but uh, he was very involved. Eight for seventy five. It's just a good week. All right, let's talk about some of these sadder individuals. Pooped in his big boy pants. I'll be honest. When all the Monday Punday submissions for Justin Herbutt came in and uh, <laughs> Herbarf or whatever else you guys were submitting, I was kind of shocked because, like, I watched this game and I, I as you know, with the family, we're eating food and you know, it starts so hot, right? Like the the game was back and forth, wasn't it? Like seventeen seventeen and yeah. And then I, I never really looked at the fantasy output for Justin Herbert after that, and well, it just didn't get the job done no, one 11 fantasy points one uh passing touchdown that doesn't help if you throw two picks now you're at like you're either at no passing touchdowns if you're in a four-point league or you get two points um you know in a six-point league so uh we've talked about it quite a bit the kansas city defense is for real um there are struggles right now with the chargers offense um austin eckler we're going to talk about in a minute but the Kansas City Chiefs deserve some credit here. The, Next week against Chicago, we'll see. The Chargers are two and four. The Chargers feel like they're two and four. And Brandon Staley is like, you know how you see presidents before they enter office and after they enter office? Yes. Brandon Staley looked like a just like a a young, virile, excitable, fun head coach at one point in time. Oh, he's going for it on fourth down. This guy's awesome. Have you seen him? I don't know if he shaves his neck anymore. I mean, this guy looks like he has been put through a laundry machine. Yeah. He's aged 50 years in the last two years. He's, I mean, the hot he's seat gotta will do it be, to you. Yeah, he's got to be on the way out soon. They're two and four? They're two and four, aren't Steelers they? Steelers are four and two. I know. <laughs> hey, I got that one right, yeah, though. That yeah, was almost upset. Um, Herbert, Tua, Tua had a bad game. Uh, one touchdown. And... 
Yeah, he's he's basically split the performances. He's, he's either dominated or he's had uh, some duds. They couldn't get the running game going. If they got the running game going, I think everything would have opened up. They couldn't do it. Jared Goff, 53 pass attempts. It was a turd of a game. Yeah. He, he didn't even garbage time it. Like, somehow he provided the garbage time for... Amon Ra because of PPR. But, yeah, he, he didn't do enough to, to be successful. Next week, he is at home against the Raiders. I'm back in on golf. Bijan, we talked about that. It's tough keeping him in the duds when yeah, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really, a performance-based. It wasn't his fault. But at the same time, genuinely, like th th this is the year 2023. Everyone on that sideline knows and understands the importance of fantasy football. I, I know you might not care. That's not your goal. But at the same time, like, how do you not have anyone know before the game that, like, Bijan is competitive advantage unhealthy and will be limited yeah i don't know i mean he maybe woke up that morning and it just didn't feel good it was the night before okay so they knew mm -hmm. josh jacobs super disappointing all three of us smashed him for a lot of dollars in to our DraftKings lineup because against chicago he and he has been really good he is he's he's been you know He's had top, a lot of work. He's had a lot of work and been a top 24 running back uh, for four straight weeks. But I am excited for Jimmy Garoppolo's return next week. This was not uh, – the Brian Hoyer experience was not good. He also had a, a, a touchdown catch, a great one, called back. Mm -hmm. That was a very did nice you, catch. Did you he see that? He also had a catch that was incredible – um, a one hander. His one catch was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Did you? Uh, since this is the day of commiseration, I had to explain the sequence of events that took place for the Raiders at around the goal line, where I have Josh Jacobs and Devonte Adams. Mm -hmm. Like it's great. They're around the goal line. Second and goal. Fade to to Josh Jacobs. Touchdown catch. Great. I got my points. Yeah. Called back. Great. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry for your loss. But guess what? It's okay because Devonte Adams. Just shimmy shakes the defender out of his shoes, heads to the back corner. No one for miles. Ball dropped perfectly into his hands. Touchdown. Dropped the ball. Kicked, basically booted it out of the back of the end zone. Wow. But don't worry. They're down 24-3. to three. It's time to go for it on fourth and goal, right? Mm-hmm. Josh McDaniels, he knows the numbers. Kicked oh, the, yeah, he does. Kicked a field goal. <laughs> kicked a field goal at fourth and goal. And then at that point, the game was over. And they just took out their players. So that was fun. That was a fantasy ride that I did not enjoy. Austin Eckler, 14 for 45. You know, the big play was Josh Kelly. This is two games back from the injury for Austin Eckler. Ankle seemed to be bothering him. Yeah. This is this is kind of getting to, is he going to be around to help you category for fantasy? Because if they have to... If they have to like kind of protect him from his injury and share the work, yes, Chicago's a good matchup next week. So sure, if he's active, you're going to play him. But then you get the Jets in Detroit. Yeah. I hope this guy doesn't need to miss another week because if he misses Chicago, you're coming back off an injury to a couple tough matchups. It's just not going well. No, and, and we've seen this many times over the last several years. There are some running backs. We saw it with Saquon. When you come back from a high ankle sprain, it can take you, like, you miss games, but once you're back, it still takes several more weeks till you're at full strength and as productive as you were before. And and you just mentioned it. The, the, the Jets and the Detroit Lions, two of the most difficult defenses out there, sp speaking of the running game, then Baltimore two weeks later. It's, it's a tough stretch coming up. What, are you trying to sell Austin Eckler – looking long term at what your team's going to need for the playoff run. Um yeah, I mean it's possible. It depends on what your situation is. I I think you've got to um it, you know, if you've got a losing record, you should probably be looking to capitalize, switch, find something with more immediate uh value because if you don't get to the playoffs, it doesn't matter if he's healthy by them. Yeah. Yeah, that is it's this time of year right now. I mean, we're getting getting through week 7 and the playoffs are they're on the way. Raheem Mostert, nine for forty-five, bottled up. Jeff Wilson, 
he played 14% of snaps. He was barely out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expected him to take over. Ahmed played more. But still mostly Ahmed. meaningless. Um, you, th this was a situation where if, if you watched, you saw that the, line, the, the Dolphins were missing some offensive linemen. And the strength of the Eagles defense is that dominant Georgia Bulldog lineman. And so that they just the they, fact they that owned that area. Mostert Mostert ended up with forty five rushing yards on nine carries, which is five a carry. Mostert was like three for negative eight to start the game. He did everything he could do. They just could not block Reddick and Carter and Fox or uh Cox and, yeah. and you know this whole defense and once you're down and you know you have to throw yeah, which is over. what the Dolphins got into this is this is a couple situations now where we've we have seen the Dolphins absolutely destroying so many opponents and then they've had really like two tests on the I season know. I know you know it's like oh the big game against Buffalo we were excited to see what happens and they got smoked 20 to 48 and then the big game this week everyone was waiting for against the the great Eagles and they get smoked, uh, seventeen thirty one. So I think they, I think it's this defense, man. They need those. They need Xavier Howard. They need Jalen Ramsey. They need some of these defensive pieces back. Two of them ran into each other last night. It was a mess. Uh, Aaron Jones, huge disappointment. I thought he would be back and involved. Instead, he was back and uninvolved. And the, the whole, you could put the Packers. Just put the Packers. What a wet fart. What a. I mean, that is a wiper. That is one where it's like, I can't sit here anymore. If I keep sitting, you're going to see it on the outside. <laughs> so I got to stand up. I mean, what is the mental state of Packer fans, Al? It's not good. Yeah. I mean, what what is the uh, what's the future hold? What's the just uh, the Jordan Love confidence level? He'll get there. Okay. I think <laughs> His, so the confidence the, level is is 50 50. The Packers are two and four. And it's not looking great two and four so that would be the same record as the bears i believe that is true yeah would that be the same record as the vikings i believe that is true let me look up that whole division i think we could just move on vikings are two and four packers are two and four i'm guessing the uh the bears must be two and five that's They're probably, correct probably having at the buy yep um that is correct all right, uh, Cooper Cup, two for 29. That's not good. That is not good. It is surprising. The also, consistency we've seen from Cooper Cup is like no other wide receiver. So it sucks to see. And while Puka did great, you've got the questions in your mind of, oh, is this going to be like a we get a Puka game or we get a Cooper Cup game? And I don't believe that for one stinking second. I think both guys are going to be awesome the vast majority of every game. Keenan Allen, four for 55. Uh, nine targets. Uh, down game. It was more Joshua Palmer in this one. And then Devontae Smith, we talked about him at length earlier. He is the wide receiver, 32 on the year right now. Um, you know, every player during the course of the season, especially when they're young, you're looking at, you know, are they evolving into a top 12 perennial talent? Are they, uh, you know, what are they for dynasty long term? Like Devontae Smith is a great, player but it's clear that he is you know like waddle this year like higgins this year um there is a hierarchy that is reigning supreme and so the possibility of Devonte smith having a bad game versus the possibility of aj brown having one smith's gonna have more of those christian watson three for 27 yep tyler lockett four for 38 that Bad was a pretty, and shocking. Yeah, really disappointing game. No Metcalf. He always torches the Cardinals, uh, but he wasn't really needed. Gabe Davis, one four six. Is this two two uh, turds in a row? This is two turds in a row. Twenty one yards last week, <clears throat> six yards this week, and in fact, four of the seven games so far. So the majority, he has yet to reach forty yards. Now he's been good for fantasy. Uh, because he has four touchdowns in four different weeks, but you, I, th I think that the floor is too low to make him someone that you have to start. I'd rather have Pickens on my roster. Sure, George yeah. Pickens. He's I mean, been great. He, he's a uh, he's a dart throw for sure. You can put him in there and um, hope he scores a big touchdown. Amari Cooper, two for twenty-two on eight targets. 
that it was it was a bad game. It started really slow for him, like no targets for a long time. It was like, why aren't they getting him involved? At one point, the commentator towards the end of the game was like, you've got to go to Amari Cooper here. That's what's missing. And then the, they threw it to Amari Cooper, and he dropped it. It was, it was a very important play. It was just a down-off game. But the fact that you got eight targets, I'm not really worried about No, it. I'm not either. I think it'll be all right. Hollywood, this is a big disappointment. Just three for 49 in the Seattle game. Uh, they dominated Arizona. Calvin Ridley. Or as uh, some say, Calvin Midley. I've seen Calvin Diddley squat. Yeah, Calvin Ridley's performance, we talked about it at length on Thursday. But Kirk is a lock. I mean, coming out of week one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you thought Calvin Ridley was the, the, the next uh, top five talent, top five performer. And you thought Christian Kirk might get tossed to the side. Zay Jones's injury brought Kirk back into the fold. And Ridley just not a go-to guy right now. Mm-hmm. And then there wasn't uh, really a lot of duds at mm -mm. the tight end position. Even that's nine years it took us to say that. I mean, that's kind of incredible. I mean, the, the Johnny Smith, Kyle Pitts, they were not great. Kyle Pitts' plays that he made were incredible. He made two catches. Oh, my gosh. That, that catch that he made one-handed behind his back was... Which, of course, he had to. Well, yeah, I mean, that is that is the problem. Um that that was one of the coolest catches I've ever seen. And when I watched it live, I didn't even understand. Like, oh, the replay looks incredible. But watching just full speed, you know, uh, when it happened, I was like, what just – how did – the ball was thrown behind him, and then Kyle Pitts is running with it. It made no sense. It was crazy. It was crazy. But, yeah, they, they were uh, they were not good. Evan Ingram and Laporta were pretty decent. Yeah, they, they kind of show up in the duds, but both were fine. Yeah. So uh, – any other players you want to talk about? I just want Christian McCaffrey and Jordan Addison to not combine for five points. Well, Jason, tomorrow we'll talk waivers, and we'll talk about how players need to keep fighting and hold on. And if you have a roster, you need to understand the fact that very few players are well, consistent every single week. It's actually shocking to me. It was shocking to me that A.J. Brown tied the record all time for 125-yard games. Yeah, you feel like some guys do that all the time. You feel like Cooper Cup must or have done Justin it. Justin Jefferson. Yeah, they, they've they've done it so many times. But, yeah, this is when you uh, – That's an all-time record for five straight games. Yeah, it was it was really surprising when I when I heard that. So we, let's steal up and let's get ready for the playoff run. Don't give up. No. No, Yeah, because sometimes all your division mates lose as well. And it gives you a glimmer of hope you shouldn't have. Or you should. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.